Jamie here, JB here. Hope everybody's doing outstanding. August 23rd, 2024, 247 on this fine Friday afternoon. Fed Day, what well, I want to call Fed Day. Fed Chair Powell did his little speech at Jackson Hole. Um, almost dovish, right? Um, pretty much what, what's the big uh, the big buzzwords? The time has come, right? I mean, there's uh, lots of songs that have been made <laughs> in regards to that. But interesting stuff. Pretty, I think he did a pretty good job uh, walking that tightrope, right? He doesn't. You don't want to be too too hawkish or overly dovish, and pretty much set set the course. There's going to be a rate cut in September. It's just a matter of how big, and then also left it open for a possible uh, bigger cut, being more aggressive depending on what happens with the July, uh, August jobs report, which will be out before the Fed meeting. I think the Fed meeting September 16th, 17th. So so good stuff, and you see the market here. We're only a stone throw away from all-time highs. Probably next week. I mean, pending any kind of geopolitical concerns or shenanigans over the weekend. But uh, yeah, good stuff here. So, uh, so the spy five 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 was the big spot I I've been talking about. We didn't get down there today. We hit it uh, three of the four, uh, three to five sessions this week. So certainly a spot I'll be looking at into next week if if we do get some kind of catalyst for for a sell off. I mean, we do have Nvidia earnings next week, so uh, that certainly could could move markets. Let me go into some of the individual names. Oh, and uh, I always say silver lining, but small caps. Take a look at the IWM. That 215 handle was, you know, similar to that that 555 on the SPY. The 215 on the IWM was uh, a, a tough nut, nut to crack, and we finally just just blew blew through it. We're up nearly three percent. If the small caps can outperform into September, I think that that just bodes well and probably could provide some tailwinds for the markets uh, into the end of the year. So that's uh, overall market, individual names, uh, you know, Roku, right? Uh, I, what else to say? They say uh, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. It's also when analysts upgrade your stock on Friday option expiration, right? I mean, uh, get, well, thankful they didn't do it on Monday after my option expired. Uh, you know, Guggenheim came out, upgraded the stock. And it wasn't even like a huge upgrade, but they just uh, kept their seventy-five dollar price target, upgrade the the stock to buy, and then it was off to the races. And I've talking about Roku. It was like it almost just needed like a little kick in the butt, like a little snowball uh, going down a cliff. You just you just got to give the little snowball a kick, and then it turns into a you know an avalanche, right? And that, not you know, hopefully you know we'll see what happens into next week, uh, into the seventies and, and beyond. But I you look at that entire the sector, the, you know, in, in regards to TTD. Um, Pubmatic, all those other names that are just these platforms that are are um, monetizing the advertiser side of it and, and matching customers with advertisers, pro providing on point content for for those uh, customers to get the best return on investment. That's what Roku has years and years years of data now. So it, I can go on rants for a while. I just I look at them. I said I, I think in my head it's going much higher. So. I uh, locked those 65 strikes in. I, you know, I was happy to actually get them out for green. So, of course, they're up 2,500% uh, a little bit, a little bit ago when it hit over 70 bucks. But, you know, at the same token, they were, they, I almost wrote them off. So, happy for that. Went and got those September strikes. I'll lock some of those in for a couple hundred percent. I'll hold those and go from there. But just, just a great story. Thankful to, well, not thankful, but happy to see the upgrade happen on Friday as opposed to a Monday. And uh, I think it heads higher uh, in the coming days, especially if the market cooperates. So that's number one. Number two is Redfin. So, you know, I got those calls. I think I got them on Friday. So I got the September's on Friday. Yesterday, I went and got the November's. And it's one of those names that has just been destroyed, right? Beat, beat, beat up. The, the company is, you know, losing money, competitive environment, higher rates. So when, when rates are high, people are not looking to buy homes, things like that. But now it seems like like this is this is it. This is the the... the the wind is behind them, you know, the hurricane winds, maybe we'll see what happens in the September and October, but you have to, you know, it's a whole, it's a cocktail of all these ingredients that I think is setting up for a move substantially higher on Redfin. And, you know, it was nine bucks when I was doing my rant, or maybe it was even eight bucks last week when I started doing my rants and here it is 1125. And I thought 1150 was a big, big part of uh, resistance or, you know, like a, a long-term goal. And it hit it today, you know, 1166. Now I start thinking, I'm like, this this could be 15, it could be 20 bucks. One times revenues, well, I have to look at the new updated um, fundamentals and what have you, but it was one times revenues compared to some of the other crazy multiples, some of these other names that competitive space trade at. 
going to be profitable at the back half of either at the end of this year or start of next year. They have their, their hands in so many different uh, pieces of, of the real estate business. You know, platforms, not only that, when you move in to have remodel uh, things to, to be able to, to enable homeowners to, to create value for their homes, just does a lot of different moving parts for Redfin and the fact that it trades down here, it's almost like it got so oversold that uh, it, it, there's going to be an overreaction to the other way. So we'll see what happens. Locks in my September and November strikes in for nice profits. I'll continue to look for opportunities to play that for upside. But I think, you know, I said 1150 on FinTwit. I think it goes to 15 bucks in the coming weeks. Call me crazy. Love the story. That's Redfin. Uh, what else am I going to Oh, Fiverr. I don't really want to talk too much about Fiverr, but above the upper Bollinger Band before, um, pulled back underneath. So it's 27 and change like that over 30 bucks into, you know, in, in the coming weeks before September expiration. Of course, I'm biased a little bit because I have the, the, the September strikes. Clear Secure, that bull flag still setting up here. Uh, you know, hit, hit highs it hasn't seen in... Uh, over 18 months. Great story. Why can't I put this up here? There it is. All right. Sorry about that, folks. At, at one point, similar to Redfin, I'll come up with a, a quick rant in, 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 on my bull case for Clear Secure. Just, it's like a cash cow. And, and it's, if you look at their compounded annual growth rate for the last seven years and since their IPO, it's insane. But people look at Clear Secure as a, a company that has no moat around their business, right? I mean, you have TSA. What does TSA do? It checks people in at airports. What does Clear Secure do? It checks people in at airports. So it's you look at Clear Secure and it's like there's no moat, but they have technology. They have partners. Delta has a stake in, in the company. The NFL has a stake. They have an addressable market outside of airports in regards to concert venues, sporting events, things like that. So uh, not only that, the company has is is flush with cash, throwing off uh, cash via special dividends, stock buybacks, tons of free cash flow. So as long as they can maintain their growth and show that they do have a motor on their business, it's like a 35, 40, 50, 60 dollar stock at some point. And I keep saying about their earnings, every time they had a beat and raise on their earnings, the stock would fade after the morning gap because people look at the earnings and say, wow, it's a great company, look at the growth. And then the shorts would come in and just destroy the stock. And then it almost became like they beat up the bulls so much that the bulls just became used to uh, the bears coming in and beating them up after earnings. And then finally, you know, start of August, they report their earnings. There was a monster beat and raise, just like they always do, announced a buyback, all that fun stuff. And then the, the stock finally took off. And it, you have to think this is the start of a multi-month multi, multi move into the 30s and, and beyond. So that's clear. Uh, and then turns. I'm not really going to talk too much about turns either. We have one more week left of August, and then we're going to have September. So the, the, the best case scenario would be that they announce their data before September 20th, which is September op option expiration, they, they report report uh, inline or better than expected weight loss. They have zero or minimal adverse effects. Nobody drops out of their study. And then I think the stock trades near 20 bucks, right? So 20 plus on that kind of uh, data. If it's inline, some adverse effects, maybe it's 15 or so. Uh, adver severe adverse effects, people dropped out of the study, inline or below expectation, the stock's probably like seven, five to seven bucks. So I, I look at I'm like, there's probably a 66% chance the stock trades 13, 14, 15 plus. That's kind of my thought process there. So I have those September strikes. I'm, I'm still looking at October. I'll probably wait. Today's the first day. If you look at the option option market, it's the first day. There's not a lot of calls or puts traded on turn, right? So, uh, you know, I was looking, it was, what was there's 9,000 calls on the open interest going, going into Monday. And then Monday, Tuesday, all of a sudden there's 18,000 contracts on the open interest for for turn and some of those were the september strikes uh the 17s which are kind of more speculative i mean there's four thousand contracts on this open on uh, outstanding on the open interest on a september 20th 17 dollar call so uh i mean that's that's speculative is, is that someone who who has a short short position that wants to hedge themselves just in case there's some crazy move to the upside I don't know, but that's that's some of it. But you have to see there's you know there's people positioning themselves to make sure they either protect themselves from a big move, or to to get more profits if the data doesn't come out as expected. But I, I just look the company has the, like two hundred sixty million dollars in cash, so it's like two thirds of their valuation is just is is in cash, right? So even if they miss on a study and studies cost money, all that, so you know they're obviously going to spend money. But if you look at the valuation side, if someone wants to go and acquire them. And then there's the, the cash, cash position, 
I mean, you, you got to look into it more than just just the cash because there's a lot more things going on. But really like turn. Um, I think that's it. I'm trying to think of some of the other names. Uh, you clear, Redfin, uh, the VIX under 16, MDB, yeah. Uh, block. <laughs> what are we gonna say about block here? Uh, up nearly three percent. It was looking great after you know the Fed minutes Wednesday. Some pullback yesterday with the rest of the market. Finally, you know, it's going back up again today. It's almost like Block used to trade on its own, and now it seems to trade in in tandem with all the other crypto names, the the, the coin, the Mara, the you know, even Bitcoin itself, which is good in a way if if crypto goes up. But I still think uh, Block's going to go over seventy bucks. I'll hold my strikes. Probably not going to add some more there. And uh, that's it, folks. Let's have a great afternoon. I'll be back on audio later, and hopefully over the weekend I'll have a little. A quick rant, probably five minutes on Redfin, probably, you know, a quick five minutes on Roku. And uh, yeah, that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. Have a great weekend. Rock and roll.